Okay, I don't remember how the dream starts, but I know that I was in my um, grandparents' old Texas home again on the ranch. And um, I was coming from inside to outside and walking off the porch to go out to the gates where the cattle were and things like that. Um, which is weird because at that house they didn't have cattle there. They had horses, but it was the, their fields were bigger and they were sectioned off in the string um, at this house. <clears throat> And um, I walked, and in the back, like you'd call it, like the back 40 or something, um, there was a, a female cow, like a heifer by itself, and the other cows weren't around as much. So I think I remember in the dream, I gave the female cow something to eat, like a tortilla or something, I don't know. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> and then I was walking back in the fields and um, my husband and daughter and I think my dad showed up in the car, our car, and they were getting ready to go somewhere. But I was, um, I think we had the trunk open or something. And um, my husband was like, okay, we'll get in the car and we'll, you know, or... And, but I needed to come back and feed the cow again. Like I wanted to, I needed to go and get the other tortilla from the house or something like that. It was like a flatbread. Okay. And so it reminds me of a tortilla, but it's like a flatbread, but it's tortilla. Okay. And, um, <clears throat> because I'm from Texas. Okay. So then, um, instead of getting in the car, I decided it's a sunny day. Okay, or it's warm, it's sunny day, and I decide to run back to the house through the fields, and I start running, and my husband's kind of worried about it, my dad's like, you forget, she's like a country girl or something like that, it's not a big deal, she's, you know, she's fine, or something like that, and I'm running, and I'm dodging cow patties. Like those cow patties everywhere because at this time, you know, uh, a lot of the cows on the front 40 and they're just, uh, but the heifer's still sectioned off to the back side. Okay. This one, this one is sectioned off to the back side. And I'm running and I'm dodging cow patties. <clears throat> well, I get closer to the house um, and I start noticing that there's snakes burrowed into the dirt. <clears throat> but you can see kind of their heads and there's all different there's different types of snakes there's smaller snakes and then there's bigger like rattlesnakes but a little different than a rattlesnake i think <clears throat> and then um I, so i start dodging them a little bit like i did not you know the smaller snakes were squirming the rattlesnakes were like so the small snakes were a little more out like on top of the ground doing movements doing things okay like moving and the bigger snakes were inside the ground um hiding with their heads barely out okay like letting the small snakes do what they need to do and um so i start dodging the smaller snakes mind you i'm still running barefoot so i'm, I'm you know dodging them and running and then I get to bigger grass and I can't see the snakes as much you know like because I'm by the house and the, the grass is greener like a yard but it needs to be mowed a little bit <laughs> and then um I see as I'm well I'm getting up on the porch and I look behind me to make sure that a snake didn't follow me that I didn't know like didn't you know, is it following me up on the porch? And I'm like, okay. And our porch is a covering on, on this older house that they had. It was a covering, um, and it had a cement, uh, like, long porch where you had, like, you know, outdoor sofas and things like that. It's just a big porch. And um, I turned, and I saw uh, my cousin, which is older now, but, like, when he was five 
okay, and he was playing in the grass. So he was five and he was playing in the grass, but he was like just running around, like walking, kind of doing the little boy things, you know, probably, I don't know, just joking around. And he had a little stick, like a, he was like a staff, like he was holding it like a stick. And I went to call Adam to him, um, you know, hey, there's um, snakes in the grass. Like, you need to get up here. There's too many of them. Like, get up, right? But he wasn't paying attention to me. He kind of ignored me like he couldn't even hear me saying it because he didn't even stop what he was doing. He kept just walking and doing what he was doing in the grass. Okay. And about that time, um, his mom, so my aunt, came up on the porch and she came from the driveway area and she had a she had like one of those manila envelopes that you put like secrets in you know or you mail in or something but it's like an office envelope and it had something written on the front and she was hiding it and she shoved it like in between two things and it bent and I could see what it said. It had something written on it, but I can't, re- I couldn't remember what was written on it. And I had the thought that my aunts were in the house doing the same thing. Like they were hiding something. They all had to find this thing. Um, <coughs> um, each other's envelopes and whoever's envelope got found first. That's the one they were using for the holiday. It was like Thanksgiving. And I had this feeling it was like, something to do with like a Thanksgiving recipe or dinner or something. I don't know. Something like that. Okay. And my aunt had went and gotten hers from like other people, like neighbors. And that's why she was coming back on the porch. She had, she had gotten this recipe or something from those around her, other people around her. Okay. And <clears throat> um, we had a, a like interaction. I just don't remember what was said. And um, I think that was the time I woke up. I think that was the time I woke up. Well, let me think. Okay, and I heard or. <clears throat> In the dream, I was told when I was when I was running up on the porch, I heard um, uh, snakes in the shadows, snakes in the shadows. Um, okay, so then I went into a real quick little dream. That's okay. That's why I, I didn't wake up then. I was like, wait, something else happened. Okay, so after that, um, I was standing watching, and there was four men in a room. And they were sitting at this table, okay, and it wasn't that it was dark, dark, but the table only had light on it with them or whatever. And um, they all had these envelopes in front of them, those envelopes, like the, the manila office full, you know, the privacy envelopes or whatever. And um, like the secrets, like top secret things. And, um, um, the, on the side of the table that had the two men sitting, um, the one closer to the head. Oops, sorry, hold on. And two of them, two of the men were sitting on one side of the table. There was one, like, um, at the head of the table but they were all kind of close. They were all close. So it wasn't like a long table. It was like a, it wasn't square. It was more like a small rectangle. So two men were on one side. Um, and then the one was at the head. And then there was another one across from the two men on the other side. So four men in total. Um, and each of them had an envelope and they had done something. And one of the envelopes was automatically like rejected. Okay, like it, 
it wasn't going to be the thing that they were choosing. So it, that was out. Okay. And in the, in the dream that I was watching, um, I got a sense that they had like, for some reason they had, they acted like they were going somewhere together or doing something together, like a trip or, um, I don't know. They were doing something together all together. And it had names of places on them. Okay. And, um, um, the, on the side of the table that had the two men sitting, um, the one closer to the head of the table person, man, um, he's the only, for some reason, he's the only man that I can remember at the table. And it was Chevy Chase. Okay. And, um, he was dressed the same that he kind of dressed in, I think, like the, he's got a couple of movies or something. I think it was like the European vacation or something. Anyway, like a, uh, like slacks and a, a, um, V-neck sweater. <clears throat> okay. Like eighties, like slacks and a V-neck sweater. And the guy at the head of the table was about to open the envelope that they were going, the, the plan they were going to do. Okay. And, um, Chevy Chase said, I know we're going to Disney world, Disney world. And they were like, we're not going to Disney world, Chevy Chase or something. Right. And, um, then they were going to open the envelope and see where they were going. And for some reason I knew like, Oh, well, for some reason in my head, I think I knew that one of the envelopes had something about once again, Chevy Chase, like Las Vegas on it. I don't know. It was weird. Um, okay. And then, um, I did not, I got woken up and I did not see like where they were going or really what envelope they were opening. Okay. But it was only four men around that table. And, um, I get the feeling that it wasn't obviously actors and they weren't going on vacation, that this was all a political arena, like with the war and the nations. Okay. And, um, them coming together. Right. But against something or hitting something or doing something. Okay. Um, and then I was trying, I was, you know, asking, you know, God, please just let me remember what was written on that envelope that my aunt was hiding that one recipe thing. And I could see it, but I couldn't remember it. And the only thing that comes to my mind when I was asking was bar Jesus. I guess that's how you pronounce it. It feels weird pronouncing it that way, but it's B A R and then Jesus right, which is a name of a man <clears throat> in Acts chapter 13. Um, so I'm going to do a little more digging on that. Okay, I'm going to try and explain real quickly some more of the dream, I believe. Um, so my grandparents' house, they actually at one point in time, when I was even younger, they did have cows there. Um, it's just that they ended up having more cows and they got more land that was away from the house and put the cows there. So then the horses went in, but, um, because we used to bottle feed the babies, some of the babies needed bottle feeding, um, some extra food, but, um, where the, heifer was sectioned off. Okay. Um, my grandparents 
raised like black Angus and red heifers, um, like beef masters and things like that, but, um, red heifers. So, um, there was a one red heifer in this dream that was sectioned from the rest kept apart. Okay. So it made me feel like there's one already sectioned and kept apart. That's perfect. Okay. And it's just kind of like fattening, a fattening of the calf. Okay. Um, feeding it, a fattening of the calf, getting it ready for ceremonies. Um, the flatbread, the tortilla, which I, I joke with my kids when they're trying to make the, uh, the flatbread. I'm like, Oh, it's a tortilla. Um, is reminds me of the temple bread. Um, the temple bread being prepared and the fattening of the calf for the temple ceremonies. Okay. Um, I'm running barefoot and there's cow patties everywhere. One, um, toward the end of my video, I'm putting something about cow patties and rituals and, um, ceremonies in India that they do for their new year. Um, praising false gods and things like that. So, um, it's very interesting. It's just a really quick little, uh, thing if you want to read it and look at it, but, um, the cow patties in this dream reminded me of, um, one rituals and ceremonies, um, and kind of like, okay, so like poop, um, they were told in the camps back in the, the old Testament to, um, to poop outside of your camp because God walks amongst your camp. God walks in your camp and amongst your camps so that you can defeat your enemies and to poop outside of your camp and take shovels with you and bury the poop because God can't be around the filthiness I like this in the filthiness. Okay. Um, and so they would have to poop outside the camp and then shovel it and cover it, cover the sins. Well, we know that we as Christians are covered by the blood of Jesus. Our poop is covered by the blood of Jesus. God now can dwell inside of us. God in us, Holy Spirit, we are sanctified, justified, sealed, ready. We are redeemed by the blood of Jesus, right? Ready for rapture, ready. We, we walk with him in life. We, um, we're his, we're God's, um, children now, right? If you're, if you're saved and you believe he died on the cross for you, that his blood covers you, that he's the son of God. He making me the Lord of your life, that he was risen again on the third day and that he's coming back for you. Or that if you're, um, if you pass away, that you'll be in heaven with him. That's the promise. Okay. Eternal life through Christ Jesus, our Lord and savior. Um, so we, cover our poop with the blood of Jesus. Um, and the ones that do not believe the nations, um, Israel, you know, his chosen people, um, the ones there that do not believe and they still do rituals and they, they, um, they lean on these rituals to save them and be in right standing with God. Um, you know, then they were told to cover their poop. Well, their poop was all over the camp. <laughs> I was dodging it. Okay. Running from this red heifer to go get more to, to feed the red heifer. Okay. And there was poop everywhere. Okay. Then that's when I ran into the snakes. Now the little snakes were like green. They were green little snakes. And, um, the ones hiding underneath the dirt, like the dry earth, almost like a cracked drought, dry earth. Um, were black. Like you see their skulls again, like they're bigger snakes. Okay. They were bigger snakes and the little ones, the bigger snakes were like puppeteers, um, letting the little snakes do what they needed to do for them. They were just like a starter and they were just using them kind of. Um, and the big snakes were plotting bigger plans in secret, they were plotting bigger plans, letting the little ones kind of take the falls for things and do things. And then the big snakes were going to come with their bigger plans, and their bigger hits. Okay. Um, it was all like in secret. Okay. They were down below kind of just pulling the strings a little bit. Um, then 
got up on the porch. That's why I heard snakes in the shadows. Okay. I know that Holy Spirit brings everything. He brings everything to light and there's nothing hidden from God. So God's always in control. There's nothing hidden from God, nothing in the shadows for God, but for, you know, that's why he gives us things and dreams and visions and the Bible that we can read because all this was written how long ago it's it's a living history book like read it it tells you it tells you what's going on read ezekiel and daniel and revelations and amos and um read you know read um romans and first corinthians and matthew for salvation and things like that but read revelations and and know know what's going on so you're in the light you know you're you're a child of light if you're with jesus Okay, you're not in the dark on anything. Okay, um, so then the envelope that um, my aunt had that I couldn't remember reading it, but it had black like words and it was two words separated, and she was hiding it. It was it was kind of like a recipe, like a plot recipe, right? But to her, it was like a Thanksgiving side, like that. Is, is mine going to be chosen? If it's found, it's going to be the one chosen that's going to be used, right? And um, that's what I was trying to remember. And um, the Holy Spirit gave me Bar Jesus, okay? And that, like I said, is in Acts 13. Um, I'll put something more about that, but he was a sorcerer. Um, so I'll put more about that, okay? Um, then when it went to the room with um I'm trying to make sure i didn't forget anything when i went to the room where two men were sitting on one side of the table almost seemed because they're on the same side of the table you usually sit on the same side of the table with people that you're already in agreement with like you already have some kind of connection with so either um same type of relationship in nations or states you know relationship or um they already have kind of an agreement going and they've talked to you know um, there was one on the other side across from them and then the person at the head of the table. So it reminded me of like the nations and they're coming to agreement of what, what's the big thing. They're the big snakes, maybe under the sand that are waiting, letting the little things play out. Um, so what are we actually going to use? What are we doing? You know, whose envelope, just like my aunt, whose envelope is going to be used? Which one's going to be picked? Um, there's more on that um okay so when i was waking up from the dreams um i heard the parable of the leavening the leaven and the woman that hides leaven in the three you know, the three piles of flour, I guess it is, right? The parable of the leaven. Um, and then I heard, we are the leaven. We are the leaven. So where you get this stuff from is that I get dreams and things like that. And then I record, you're listening to me talk. I record as soon as I wake up and have something so I can get exactly what um, I'm being told or told to say and not forget anything. And um, um, maybe as I'm talking, um, the Holy Spirit still puts words in my mouth and speaks and things like that, um, the way that it should be said, instead of me trying to intervene a little more. So that's why it sounds different. And that's why I don't always get on. You hear exactly what needs to be said. And then sometimes I'll get on and explain like this. Okay, but I'm going to let you listen right now to another part of it um, that I forgot that was toward the bottom of that. So. Okay, now I keep getting like I can't remember. It's like I've gotten this for the past year or more, more than a year. The temple doesn't have to be built for the sacrificial red heifer. It doesn't. They just need the, the uh, they want the foundations. Like the, they want to know where their foundations are laid. 
like maybe the original foundations of like John Moses or you know the, the, the foundations okay they're going to want to start everything um we know that um that Israel, when Israel's surrounded, we start looking up because our redemption draws nigh. So that means rapture. Okay. We know that when everything happens and goes down, that there's going to be a, like a stop to things. Um, and like a false peace treaty is going to come in. So, like, I feel like they're going to want to give thanks for, like, God sending that false peace treaty that it because it's a peace treaty right and they don't know what's false it's in revelations okay and that's the seven year tribulation we're already gone in the rapture so they're gonna to me it's gonna be false peace treaty and then giving things some like the red heifer so it's we're their people like it's okay so then they have like a three and a half year and then you know because that false peace treaty is like put up with um it's given and the the bringing on the the anti right the anti person okay so then in three and a half years that is broken that is broken and that's the mark and pushing like like take it or you're you know, you're not on my side, then you're gone. Okay. All in Revelations. All in Revelations. Okay. So, um, I feel like the, um, I feel like the heifer, the red heifer has been sectioned. Like they've picked the one and it's sectioned off from the other one. Okay, the temple bread's getting ready, like it's like it's all about to happen. We know that. Okay. And um then they're gonna give thanks for the false peace treaty. But we're gone. We're raptured. Okay, because we are not gonna see all of this like we're, we're gone. Okay, I'm going to read something really quick um, about the bar Jesus in Acts 13, 6 through 17. It says, Barnabas and Saul arrive at Paphos. They are challenged by a sorcerer and false prophet named Bar Jesus or Bar Joshua. Bar Jesus was a counselor for Sergius Paulus, the Roman proconsul of Cyprus. Thus, Bar Jesus was a very powerful man. In the government, his name means son of the Savior. But he is also known as Elamas, meaning wise in Arabic. Sergius Paulus wishes to meet with Saul, but Bar Jesus opposes this meeting. Paul is described as, okay, so Saul is Paul, right? Is described as full of the Spirit as he condemns Bar Jesus. Paul accuses him of trickery and deceit and perverting the ways of the Lord. Paul then blinds the man and he had to be led away. Okay, this is in itself a rather unique event in the New Testament. Sorry. In the New Testament, but the miracle is also a symbolic act. There are a number of miracles in the New Testament, which are more or less prophetic acts. Jesus heals a blind man in Mark 8, who begins to see then sees fully. This is a picture of the understanding of the disciples at the point in the Gospel of Mark. The result is that the Gentile man, who is not... A God-fearing believed and was amazed at the teaching about the Lord. Luke uses the blinding. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. 
Luke uses the blinding of Bar Jesus at this point in Acts to signal a major shift to Gentile mission. Luke begins to refer to Saul and Paul. The change occurs in the middle of the conflict with Bar Jesus. Likely, Saul was also known as Paul, but it is at its, this critical part of the story when Luke chooses to change names in the narrative. This indicates a major shift in the progress of salvation history for the Jews to the Gentiles. Luke also switches the order of the names from this point on in the book. Up until this event, Barnabas and Saul have traveled together. Now Paul and Barnabas will travel on to Antioch. The only exception is at the Jerusalem Council in Acts 15, likely because Barnabas took the lead in speaking with James. On a literary level, literary level, Paul is the main human character for the rest of the book. The blinding of Bar Jesus is the transitional point in the whole book. Paul and Bar Jesus are in many ways similar. Both were blind and both encounter the truth of the gospel of Jesus. As Daryl Bach says, Elimus is where Paul was years earlier, Acts 4.46. But Bar Jesus is radically off base from the law. He is a sorcerer and working for a Roman official. While Paul condemns this one man for his unfaithfulness, he is also pointing his finger at the whole of the Jewish nation, Paul, too, was an error concerning the nature of Jesus as the Messiah. Okay, because remember, um, when Paul was Saul, he was uh, convicting and crucifying and killing the Christians. And then Jesus came to him and said, why are, you, why are you killing my people? Why are you persecuting me? Okay, and then um, Saul became a disciple for Jesus. Um, learned the truth, became a disciple, and then he was, his name was changed to Paul. Okay, God changed his name from Saul to Paul. So, it is critical to note that Bar Jesus is blind only for a time, not permanently. So, t so too, Israel is only set aside in the progress of salvation. They are not cut off forever. If this is a symbolic miracle indicating that the Jews are blinded to the gospel. It also promises a restoration of the Jewish people in the future. Okay, and I read that, which we know you can read it in the Bible. Okay, Acts 13. But I read that and that was by a Philip J. Long on Reading Acts. It's a readingacts.com. If you want to go through that, the blinding of Bar Jesus. Okay, I'm also going to scroll through this real quick because I had to remember and look up some things. <clears throat> Chevy Chase and the European Vacation was done in 1985. Okay, um, and I know it sounds like why are you worried about Chevy Chase and the European Vacation? No, they're horrible movies. Um, but let's see, we all know them or we know them and him and Christmas vacation and things like that. So I think that the European vacation and the way he was dressed, um, on that lends to the nations and that were around the table and things like that. Okay. So they compete, they win, uh, they compete on a game show called the pig and a po pig. I'm just going to say pig. Okay. And, um, which the pigs are unclean, right? Um, but because we're through Jesus, we can eat, we can eat pork, but pigs are unclean, especially, um, it's unculture, I think, or uh, what do they call it? Okay. Anyway. Um, and it's an all expense pay trip to Europe and a tour of Western Europe. Okay. They stay in a hotel in London. Um, things happen. They go to the Lambeth Bridge and Stonehenge. 
Um, there was something that I read that, um, <clears throat> okay, so <clears throat> they are in Paris. Um, someone in that movie gets kidnapped by like, I think it's like Nazi things, like not like people. Um, they go to West German village. Okay. Um, they're under a medieval archway or something. It says, um, the vendors in the street. Um, I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, it also deals with Rome. Okay. Um, and there's thieves as well in this movie. Um, let's see. It deals with, uh, uh, I'm going to mention it. Um, the Volkswagen Beetle which I think we know something about the Volkswagen Beetle and the history and how that came into play. And I think it dealt with during like, Germany and the Nazi um, era and things like that, World War II and things like that. <clears throat> um, and then it says when they're flying home from, um, let's see, they chase um, a thief all over Rome. Okay, and on their flight home, um, uh, Chevy Chase messes up the plane somehow in the cockpit with the pilots, and he ends up making the plane hit the Statue of Liberty torch, and it goes upside down. Okay, and so he kind of hits the Statue of Liberty with the plane. Okay, some things really quick about European vacation. Um, where did they go in European vacation? The locations and the famous land parks, okay, and family tours were England, France, West Germany, and Italy, including London, uh, London's Tower Bridge, Lambeth Bridge, Roundabout, um, places like that. So England, France, West Germany, and Italy. Then... Um, what German town was in the European vacation? It was Italy, Brixen. Um, scenes supposedly taken place in West Germany were actually shot in a German-speaking part of Italy, Brixen. Um, okay, so what I guess some people know is that the Wally World, okay, because it reminded me what he said, we're going to Disney World, remember uh, reminded me of the Wally world is that they took the vacation on route 66 um, from where they were going to make it to Wally world. And that is, um, 3000 miles, a uh, trip, like a journey for them. Okay. 3000, 3000. That's a big number for even the Bible, right? The end times, um, Jesus has returned. So, um, and they took route 66 when they did that. Um, Wally World was actually a facade. It had a front face. Um, it was deception because um, it was a Six Flags, and then they put a front facade on it. Okay. Um, and it was filmed in um, Six Flags Magic Mountain. Remember, Bar Jesus was a sorcerer. I'm not saying like, oh, Wally World and Six Flags is in this, but this is all like deceptions and facades um, of maybe the nations. Remember, we're dealing with nations and the um, rituals and things like that. Harken back to the dream that I'm talking about. Okay. So um, Wally World theme park is represented by Santa, Santa Anita Park in Arcadia, California, and Six Flags Magic Mountain in Valencia, California. Okay. Um. Okay, the leavened bread. Okay, remember the parable of the leavened bread? Um, that, 
that kind of makes me have two things. Like you put the God, the, the good news in and it starts working. The Holy spirit moves and rises and it rises up and it builds more believers. Um, one, it just can't be stopped. Like the good news, Jesus just can't be stopped no matter what they do. I mean, it's thousands and thousands and thousands of years and it's, it's just truth. Truth can't be stopped. Okay. You can try and be stopped. It's not going to be stopped. Okay. Um, but the love and bread also made me like things were hidden and he, she, the woman hid leaven into it so that it would rise up. Um, the truth would rise up. Christians are rising up. That could be like the rapture rising up where the, where, cause she said, where or she said, um, the Holy spirit said, you know, we're the leaven. Right. So rapture, but then what are they going to be planting? What does revelation say in the Bible that gets planted for others? Cause you know, God still makes a way. He still wants everyone to hear and see and come to him. So then the 144,000 are left to spread the truth, to spread the truth of Jesus Christ. So I really feel like that's the leaven being planted and hidden into the flower and they're going to rise up and spread. And it's the still, no matter what, no matter what's going on, it's going to spread and it's going to spread like wildfire uh, fire. It's going to um, break chains and bondage and people are going to come to know Christ even after the rapture. We know that it's just that after the rapture, you're going to have to choose, um, the side bondage. Okay. Or choose freedom with Jesus. And then they're going to be chasing down Christians, just like they do the Jews, just like they're doing the Jews. They're going to be chasing down the Jews and the Christians. And, um, um, the Bible says beheading that if you don't choose the way of the anti that they'll behead you. And then you just, also are living just in the times that Jesus didn't want you to live in the meanness. He didn't want the meanness. He didn't want you to be in this, this very dark time, this meanness. Okay. Um, so leaven in German. Okay. Um, let's see. Old English, Leo one, Leo, I don't know, I'm saying that horrible, <laughs> composed of the elements of Leo, which is dear. It means dear, beloved, plus wine, friend. So dear, beloved, wine, friend is what leaven means in German. Okay. Um, what is leaven used for? A leavening agent is a substance that causes dough to expand by releasing gas once mixed with liquid, acid, or heat. So when you're under pressure, it's going to expand like wildfire. The gospel is going to spread because the 144,000 and people are still going to be going, I know what this is. This was the rapture. We heard those crazy Christians talking about it. Okay. Are the ones that didn't believe and, and you're planting the seeds. What's horrible is that we want the seeds to be planted and that they grow, that they're not left here, that they come to Jesus before. But at least they've got, you're planting seeds that when we get raptured, they know and that they don't take the deceit and that they come to Jesus then because, you know, was he say, do, do not fear the person that can kill the body, fear the one that can cure, kill the soul. Like this is, you're fighting a good versus evil battle, you know, the devil wants to take out your soul for eternity and God came to save it, give you freedom, give you freedom more abundantly and joy. And you just have to accept his gift of Jesus, his son, right? It's a, it's a fight for your soul. It's not a fight for land. It's not a fight for people. It's not a fight for money. I mean, that's all like the deception of the devil, but it's all about the soul. He just laughs because he gets everyone's eyes on the deception when he's really He's really coming for your soul. He wants, he wants to destroy God's creation. We're his number one creation. He loves us. He built us as his family. He came to earth to like, 
He's rooting for us. He wants us to know him. He's rooting for us. He's not looking to like um, watch us fail. He even came to earth and died for us. He walked the path we couldn't walk. We're still going to fall, even though we are called to, to get on the path with him and walk the narrow way and try in him. We're still going to mess up. And he knew that. That's why he came and, and died on the cross and shed his blood to cover cover our poop. Okay, so we could go to heaven if we accept the gift. And he rose again. He's coming back. He's coming back. But we're not guaranteed the next breath. So if you die in the next second, where are you going to go? If you're in Christ, you go to heaven. Don't let the devil steal your soul for eternity. Eternity. This is forever. It's not where you're going to be until you're 80 on the earth. It's where you're going to be forever with your soul. Because at a point when the world ends and which we're there, the rapture, then it has seven year tribulation. And then God comes back and reigns on the earth and like everything's destroyed and he rebuilds. Okay. But, um, when he comes for the rapture, we're going up body. So for eternity, you're going to have for eternity right now, people, yes, we have bodies in the ground and souls are up in heaven or hell right now. Okay. But when the rapture happens before the, the anti and everything. Okay. When that rapture happens, he's taking the ones that are in him that are alive and dead. So he's coming for the bodies of the ones that had been sleeping so they can have a body in heaven now. Okay. And he's taking those up that are Christians and believe full body. He's taking our bodies out of this and us, our soul and bodies together. Up. So for eternity, you're going to have a soul and a body. Where do you want to put it for eternity? Not if you're lucky 80 years on this earth. Where are you going to put it for eternity? Put it in heaven. Store your treasures in heaven. Okay, really quick. Matthew 13. Go and read it. But Matthew 13, 33 is another parable spake he unto them. The kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven, which is a woman, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till the whole was leavened to the whole was risen. So hid, hid some leaven in the mill until the whole was risen. Okay. It says all these things spake Jesus unto the multitude in parables and without a parable spake he not unto them. He only spoke parables unto the multitude that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet saying, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. Who has he who has ears, let him hear and eyes. Let him see, let him listen and see, let him listen and see. I am fulfilling the prophecies. I have fulfilled them. I have fulfilled them. Okay, I'm going to share Acts 1. Okay, Acts 1. Um, verse 5. For John, this is John the Baptist, okay, John truly baptized with water. But ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, this is the disciples asking, okay, Jesus, saying, it's red letters, so Jesus' words is answering, okay? Um, but this is the disciples saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And he said unto them, so Jesus said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and in Samaria, 
and to the utterance, uttermost part of the earth and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld him, while the disciples were looking at him, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. This is after the resurrection. He was full body. Jesus rose again. Okay. He was talking to them. This was after his resurrection. And when he had spoken these things while they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into the heaven? This same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as he, as ye have seen him go into heaven. He will come the same way as you've seen him go to heaven. He will come. He will return the rapture the same way to get you. Okay, I'm going to put this out. I was um, given to highlight this. Let's see, 11, 6, 23. Okay, and it's Acts, and it's chapter 13. Okay, Acts chapter 13. Um, but it's not all of it, so it's only a couple of verses. Um, starting at verse 26. Men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham, and whosoever among you feareth God, to you is the word of this salvation sent. For they that dwell at Jerusalem and their rulers, because they knew him not, nor yet the voices of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath day, they have fulfilled them in condemning him. And though they found no cause of death in him, yet desired they, Pilate, that he should be slain. And when they had fulfilled all that was written of him, they took him down from the tree and laid him in a sepulcher. But God raised him from the dead, and he was seen many days of them, which came up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem. And he was seen many days of them, which came up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem, who are his witnesses unto the people. And we declare unto you glad tidings, how that the promise which was made unto the fathers, God hath fulfilled the same unto us, their children, in that he hath raised up Jesus again, as it is also written in the second Psalm. Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And as concerning that he raised him up from the dead, now no more to return to corruption, he said on this wise, I will give you the sure mercies of David. Wherefore, he saith also in another psalm, Thou shalt not suffer thine holy one to see corruption. For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell on sleep and was laid unto his fathers and saw corruption. But he whom God raised again saw no corruption. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. And by him all that believe are justified from all things from which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. Beware, therefore, lest that come upon you which is spoken of in the prophets. Behold ye despisers and wander and perish for I work a work in your days a work which ye shall in no wise believe though a man declare it unto you 
And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogues, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Now when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who, speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. But seeing ye put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord, and as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. And the word of the Lord was published throughout all the region. But the Jews stirred up the devout and the honorable women and the chief men of the city and raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them out of their coats, coast. But they shook off the dust of their feet against them and came unto Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Ghost. This by no means says that God is not faithful to the Jew. My Lord and Savior Jesus Christ came from the Jews. He is a Jew. You love him with all your heart. You love God with all your strength. You give him your whole life. You give him everything you are. You give him your whole being. Because without him, you are nothing. He died for your sins. You were justified. You were cleansed by his blood. And he rose again the third day. He went up whole body into heaven and he's coming back to get us sooner than you think. We pray for all the unsaved. We pray for all of Israel. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ that are being persecuted. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May he protect you. I love you. God bless you. Angels watch over you. Jesus protect you.